Hey everybody, it's Nick. Uh, for today's tutorial, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to kind of work our way backwards from something. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys an example. Uh, and then in the next coming tutorials, we're going to we're gonna kind of take apart um, some of the relevant computational design ideas uh, that uh, are embedded in that example. So we're going to kind of start with kind of the dessert uh, and then maybe go back and eat our vegetables. I don't know if that metaphor works, but um, so I've got this kind of surface here on these four pedestals and it's fully parametric. Um, it uh, You can change the size of the openings and the colors uh, that are inside of that canopy um, by adjusting what's called an attractor point. As you can see like um, you can move this point around. You can see those openings kind of change. Uh, you can also adjust. Uh, you could change the location um, of of the points on the pedestals or the um, the kind of size of the arch that's on these things. Um, but it's basically like a four. It's a surface defined by four curves, uh, and those are defined by four points. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna build this. Uh, in Grasshopper, and I'm going to give you the ability to kind of mess with it parametrically. You can also even change like the color gradient and some things in it um, if you're if you're if you're, if you're interested in that. Um, we're going to be able to change the kind of paneling that's on it. Um, to do that, though, you're going to need you're going to need a couple of things. Uh, you're going to need a program called Lunchbox, and I've given you guys um, a link to that on Canvas. Um, Lunchbox is developed by uh, Nate Miller Improving Ground. They're an a office currently out of Omaha that does computational design. Uh, it's a great tool. You're going to install that in Grasshopper, uh, like, you know, like before we get going. Um, the other thing we're going to do uh, to, to, to go ahead and start this is uh, we're going to go back and there's a file that I've given you. It's called Surface Start. And it looks like this. And, to, and all it does is basically generate these like boxes for us. Um, so you're going you're gonna to go ahead and start with that right away. So I'm going to get rid of these boxes here. And this is what you'll see. You'll see kind of a plane. And what you have control over are the locations of four kind of random boxes and then randomizing their heights. So play with that until you get something where they're kind of spaced out a little bit. If they're too close together or they're, or they're not really, um, you know, if, if it's not really like a helpful kind of position, uh, go ahead go ahead and change that slider a little bit until you, until you get something that, that looks better. Hopefully it's pretty random for everybody. Um, the other thing you can do too is, uh, so in order to get these out, you're going to go ahead and bake them. So click on the extrude box at the end here, and I'll have this labeled. Go bake. Go ahead and put it on a layer. And now the geometry is in Rhino. If you want to, you can go ahead and just take those and kind of move them around a little bit. I don't really mind as long as they're it's just to give every make everybody's pavilion like a little bit a little bit different. Um, and so you can do that, but just like the example I showed you, you do want to have a little bit of variation and you want to have them spaced out so that they actually, uh, do work like a pavilion. Don't take them outside the box that I've made though, just to keep things like, um, consistent. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and open up a new, new grasshopper document. And we're going to make four points. So go ahead and make a point and just copy paste it. Remember, if you haven't used grasshopper in a little while. If you want to find a component, just double click, type in the name or something close to it, and you can find it. Otherwise, you can probably find it, you know, if you go up to your top. I have a ton of plugins. Do not, like, freak out about that. Um, that's just the way mine's set up. It's another reason why you, you pretty much want to always try to type things in because it's really hard to find the icon. If you want to find the icon for this, you can go up to Parameters, Geometry, Point, and you're going to drop a point. If you want to keep things kind of neat, you can kind of click line and uh, yeah, and that aligns them pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and, and take points. I What I'm going to do here is take the midpoint. Let me have midpoint snap turned on. Turn off all the other snaps or turn off a lot of them. You don't need to snap to everything, but go ahead and go ahead and make those points. So go set one point and I'm going to snap to the center and it, you can kind of do what you want. You can do the corner of each of these things if you wanted to. In that case, you go to end snap. I might just go to midpoint. Okay, so there's that one. I'm going to set this point here. Set this point here. And set this point here. And we're going to talk a lot about surface topology and how to create surfaces um, in the next couple of tutorials. But right away, we're going to make something pretty easy. 
uh, that's going to help us make a canopy. It's called a catenary. You might have talked about catenaries in history. That's what uh, Gaudi used when you when you when you hang a chain with weights to like create an arch. Gaudi used them on the Sagrada Familia. Um, there, it's a it's it's like a structural principle. If you if you hang something from two points. Uh, and then you flip it upside down, it actually creates a structural uh, arch. So the way catenary works is you take two points, and then you need a length of the chain. So the length of the length of the chain matters because that gives you the uh, the kind of hang. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a number slider, and I'm gonna set it. If I go to edit here, minimum value really should be bigger than one, but I'll make it one. And I'm gonna make the maximum value pretty large. I'll make it probably 300 units in this case. Um, you can see it's orange. It's because if it doesn't have enough chain, like it doesn't have enough length, you're not going to get a catenary. It needs it needs to have some slack. So now there's the there's the catenary slack. But you can see it's hanging upside down. Again, catenaries are supposed to be like you put weights on them and, and then and then like then you have like the gravity pulling down the chain. Well, we want to flip gravity. So gravity in this case, if you go to manage vector, is going to be we're going to make the z instead of negative one, you know, falling down. We're going to make it whatever negative gravity we're going to make it one now we have a catenary arch so that's going to be this arch here okay so we're going to, we're going to click and we're going to hold shift and we're going to click on the length slider and the catenary slider and we're going to make uh four copies of the catenary assembly okay now we gotta keep our keep ourselves straight so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug in um uh, each point as a and it's gonna break some things. That's all right. Okay. What we want is we want this curve, this curve, this curve, this curve. So we've got this one in for A. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in for B. And then we've got this one for A. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this one for B. And that seems to be okay. Let's see. Got this curve, this, nope, that's the same curve. That's not helpful. Uh, let's see, A will go that one. Yeah, okay, and then we'll go from this one to that one, and from that one to this one. Just got to keep myself straight here. There we go. Now, uh, you can you can kind of adjust these, and yours will be different, and that's exactly uh, what I want. But there's your kind of carrying your arches. Now, um, lots of different ways to make services that we're going to talk about, uh, but the one that we're going to use right now is... Um, Basically, it's called a surface from two to, th uh, you know, usually it's like a surface from two to four uh, curves. Um, yeah, edge surface. There you go. Okay. And this is pretty cool. If you plug in, it'll work with two, three, or four. So you plug in two, you're going to get a surface. That's kind of cool, actually, too. Go back to that later. Plug in three. And, and it'll calculate. It's gonna, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna like calculate for a little bit when it does that. Just, just bear that in mind there. And then we get D. So everything is gonna cause the surface to happen here, and it's gonna come out as this B rep surface here. Now you'll notice, or I notice, that what you get at the end of this is not actually a surface. It's a boundary representation. It's like a surface, but actually it's a lot of little slices. Of surfaces. That's because each one of these curves is actually uh, slightly different in the way that it's drawn, the way that it's parameterized. We'll talk about that later. But you can see, like, this actually is is not uh, it's not actually a surface. It's representing a boundary. And so in order to get to be a surface, we have to make these curves um, as similar as possible. And again, I'm just doing this right now. We're gonna we're gonna come back and cover this. So we're gonna rebuild those curves. Okay. So uh, the curve degree. See here, and we're going to make them all have the same number. You can pretty much just make all these, uh, just make four copies of these. We're not going to worry about it. What we what we need in this case is that they're this that they're um that they have the same parameters. Get rid of that. That was an accident. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, disable that. It's just getting in the way. You don't need to worry about that. It just slows things down. Okay, so the curve. Curve, curve, curve. And you can see though the way it's rebuilt, it's not flat. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and add a number component, we're going to make these third degree curves. Um, you can see now they're going to get a lot closer to those catenaries. And let's see here. Oops. It's a proxy. That's a, that one's being approximated. Kind of weird, but in this case, it doesn't really doesn't really matter a whole lot. We're just we're just trying to rebuild them. So now, if we plug these in, and enable our thing, yeah, we got surface. Okay, this kind of cleans this up a bit. So. It's fully parametric, and you can see like if unless unless we let too much air out of the catenary. Okay, so again, just kind of redrawing the curves so that they're all similar, so that when the final surface is drawn, it's nice and um, it's nice and clean. Okay, so at this point, you you have to have lunchbox installed. Okay, if you don't if you don't have lunchbox, go ahead and just save a copy of everything. Go ahead and shut this down and like come back. I'm going to be playing with these panel tools. Um, the panel tools are really handy for just very quickly creating uh, like panelizations. We talked about this a lot, how, you know, getting things out uh, so you can build them flat. It's also kind of a way to like create a design um, on the surface. Um, and so having these like panel tools is really, uh, is really helpful. Um, the U and the V are the, basically like the X and the Y of that surface, um, we're going to make a number slider. One thing, I, one thing I haven't talked about with number sliders is that if you want to make one quickly, um, you can type a number in. I'm just type 30, and depending upon there's kind of an algorithm, but like depending upon the number you use, um, so that was 30. If I say 20, it will make a number slider with parameters kind of already like built in, which is kind of neat. So you just type it in, and then it'll kind of pop up. So um, I'm still going to edit it though. So I'm just going to say minimum is going to be, it's called five maximum is going to be 30. Go ahead and dial these down a little bit on the surface. There's no X and Y. Um, there's like U and V. We talked about this with UVW coordinates. Um, so like, so like U is all of the, uh, of the coordinates going in one direction and V is all the coordinates going in another. Um, so in this case, we've got U and the V, so you can see U is going in one direction, V is going in another, and that just controls the panelization. Each of these components is a little bit different, and we're going to have to kind of experiment with them, like when you play with them later. But um, this one in particular is really nice because because of the way it panelizes everything, um, it change so the diamonds are the edges sorry the diamonds are the interior pieces the triangles are the exterior pieces so just just so you know they're actually not considered all the same thing because one of them has three sides and one of them has four sides that is uh pretty important um and i just made a couple service components there but for now i'm just gonna take a look at these as they are um i'm gonna give you kind of a basic method for making an opening in a um in one of these uh, kind of subsurfaces. So I have everything as a surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the area component to get the center of each one. So that's what C is right there. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to make a scale component. Scale takes geometry, which is the uh, base geometry, and a centroid. And then F, which is the scale factor. And so right now, like basically what I've, what I've got is I've got these surfaces and I've got these surfaces. And what you can do with that is um, you can basically take the edges of them. So you can go, in this case, B-Rep, deconstruct B-Rep. So I can take the all the edges. So I'm going to join, take the edges, and they'll be joined together. And if I flatten it, I've got the curves. Do the same thing here. So take the edges and they're um, in here. 
joined, flattened, said got these and these. And if I control the data structure here, so I'm going to make two graph components so that they're in containers with each other. So they know that they, and then I'm going to go to loft, put one in here. Now it's very important to hold shift and then to drag this in. So see it turns into a plus there. Shift, whoops, <laughs> too many times, sorry, Windows. And now I'm going to turn these off. Turning the preview off here on all these. So, oops, preview off. I've got, I'll go all the way back to my surface here. I've got those openings there, which is pretty cool. If I put a number slider in for that scale factor, you can kind of see what we've got which is that we can open and close these like pretty well. And you can say, oh, Nick, what about these triangles? Well, if you just copy paste this whole mess here, you'll get, you'll get the same thing for the triangles. This is kind of a special case though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of leave it at that. Um, We'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. You will. Whoops. Yeah, we'll we'll come back to it. So, um, so one thing you can do that's interesting is you can control the size of the holes and you can add color like I showed you. And to do that, we're going to use some special structures that are built into um, lunchbox called tractors. And I'll explain this more later. I'll explain all this later. Some of this is review, and I hope it's recognizable to you. And some of this is new. I don't expect you to know how it works yet. I just want you to see what we're doing and what the effects are and think about what the possibilities are. And then we'll actually break these things down and even expand them further. All right. So just kind of bear with me here. So we're going to drop an attractor in there. And attractor is really simple. Uh, basically, like you take a, a point or some object, well, basically a point in most cases, and you can use that point to uh, get information so i can say like what's the distance from that point to all of these other like points to all these uh to all these targets all these centers here right and then based on that number if i'm closer or further away make these openings bigger or uh, smaller and that's that can be really uh, that can be really cool um so the attractor is this point and i'm just going to right click it and i'm going to say set a point so that's the point. I think it's parametric. Yeah. Yeah. So if I move this point around, that works. You can have multiple attractors, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. It's a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. And then in the domain right now, the domain is zero to one. Zero would not work because it basically means there's no object there. Um, one means the object is, is 100%. So what I'm going to do is to create openings and make sure that there's always openings. I'm going to make that domain set domain to be like 0 0.2 to 0 0.85. Okay. And now what you get is you get a bunch of values that are based on the distance of those from those points to that attractor. And if I plug that in for F, you can see it's going to start to adjust. Hang on a second here. There we go. Okay. Where's my point? There's my point. So you can see what that looks like there. So basically like where that point is, it's gonna get a little bit more closed or open. And it's weird, but it's the distances are strange because some of the things are closer or further away. Um, so one thing, you, one thing you can do if you want to is take these center points and just take the Z coordinate out. So you can deconstruct that point so now you've got the x coordinate the y coordinate and the z coordinate and then you're going to construct a point let's just take that x and y basically this is a way of flattening them right so now you're looking at the point compared to all these other points which represent like these points and if you take that as your target now it's a little bit better I'll do this here. Yeah, I know it gets messy. I'll go to the top view. They take that point. See, it's much better at tracking. 
what that looks like. You'd be like, oh, Nick, but what I want is for that to be the openings. Okay, well, you can do that. So what you can do is just do a subtraction. And you're going to subtract 1 from those values. Now it's the opposite. Again, we'll cover this, um, and I'm going to give you a copy. I have I'm going to give you a copy of this file. It's all set up, so you don't have to worry about following all that. Um, so there you go. You can do that. And if you if you want to if you wanted to um, apply this to what's what's going on over here, just make another copy of this and then plug in the surface to here, and that should work. But we're not going to we're not going to do that right now. So keep moving on. So we've got that. Let me go ahead and hide all this. I always turn preview off as I'm working, but that's kind of that's kind of nice. And again, fully parametric. Like I can go in, never forget. You can just go in and add more detail or less detail. Of course, the more you've got, you know, the more complex the geometry is. Slower the thing's going to run. You just have to be kind of careful about what you've got going on, like what you're doing. But we've got a we've got a pretty good pretty good batch of services going. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is add color. And there's lots of ways to do this, of course. There's lots of ways. I mean, you can you can build your own attractor. Uh, you can, there's other ways to make these services. Like there's a million different ways to do it. Um, I'm just going to start with something. So I've got a gradient. I'm going to go ahead and quick change it to a rainbow preset for now, for fun. You can make your own. Um, what a gradient is, is basically it's like if you if you give it um, like a lower number and a higher number, in which case we're, we're pretty close here. Like I could I could probably go in and say like it's it's, um, you know, the factor that I've got is is um, is uh, like from 0.2 to 8.5. But this is probably close enough. And then basically, if you give it a number, it'll tell you where that color is along that continuum. So that's kind of nice. Well. We already have that information uh, from the attractor. Now the question is how to get it to the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make um, a preview. Yeah, a preview, custom preview. Take the geometry that you want, which is all these uh, surfaces. I'm going to flatten these. We'll talk about data structures later. Don't worry. And then I'm going to plug in the uh, material. And that's going to map those materials. And you can right click it and make it black and white. Make it some other kind of preset. Some crazy stuff here. Hot to cold. So we got some. Got some options. <clears throat> Again, if you're, you know, if you're really curious, like how to make the other thing exactly the same, um, you can basically just take this whole piece that's connected to these pieces here, and then take the triangles and plug into here. Oops, sorry, here. Um, yeah, do this. And then take the, um, take the lofted piece into the geometry. Uh, bear with me here, let's see here. Got my curves. And it's gonna give me that. Let's see here. Ah, flatten these. Yeah, there you go. So it's possible. I mean, I can, you know, basically, uh, you just, you just can't, you can't talk to all of them, the triangles and the services at the same time. So if you, if you do exactly the same thing to the triangles uh, that you do to the other services, you'll, you'll actually have it. Okay.
so there's the basic kind of principle um, of, of how to make a parametric surface that has an adjustable opening, that has adjustable color. Um, we're not going to go back and do exactly the same thing as this. I'm just, I'm just trying to set up the idea that like, you know, we have, we have basic parameters of like where the surface starts. We use a network of curves or, or, or other geometry to base our surface on. We panelize our surface. We can parameterize our surface for openings. We might actually distribute a, like a different kind of geometry over the surface. We can control the scale of the openings based on a point. We can control the color based on a point. There's like a million different options like once you start to break this thing down. So hopefully that's kind of inspiring. Um, it's just a way to kind of see what this stuff looks like. Um, so, so you know, I want you guys to try to build this and experiment with um, how it works as a system, what the potentials are, like where it breaks. If you guys have questions about where that's where that kind of happens, um, within the plugin for uh, Lunchbox, there's a lot of different kinds of panels, and some of them will work like right out of the box. Um, so the one that we use was diamonds. Uh, you could go into the, I believe the triangle panels and the setup is very similar. So all you would need to do is take that surface, plug it in, plug in the U, plug in the V, and then plug that into the surface that you had. And it's gonna, yep, there you go. And then just hide, or, uh, turn off preview. All right, and you, a lot of this stuff will work with a different like design. You can see though that the parameters really, really matter. Like that's really gonna change things quite a bit um, when you look at it. By the way, I'm right clicking on these when I do this, like I missed that before. Um, the other thing though is that there's some, and some that you might like a lot, like the hexagon cells. So these, if you look at them, they output surfaces. And this works with a surface. But if you go to something like the hexagon cells, you're going to actually get something different. Um, let me go ahead. Kind of turn this off for now. So you can see these cells here. These are uh, curves. The, the, everything else that's here is actually dependent on uh, services. I, you can't get the centroid of a curve. What you can do, though, is get the polygon center which is similar, then go in and get that. There's also centers that are already coming out of the uh, of the surface component. You can use that as well, okay? So what, and so what we gotta do is be really careful and say, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, um, I'm gonna take those cells and I'm going to plug them in here this is probably going to break a lot of things down. <laughs> and the center is going to be these things. And I want to get the centers here. So where this is going away, this is going away. Okay. And then I, now I've got, if I turn this on, I should have these scaled down. And then I actually don't need these things. I'm going to take the original cells and graft them. And take the shrunken cells and graft them. Hmm. Hang on a minute here. I broke something. Data tree, data tree. Ah, shoot. Okay. The data structure is different. So we have to simplify those. So I just right click and go simplify. Sorry, that's really complicated. So again, they're not surfaces, they're curves. So I take the geometry and I don't, I don't need to find the edges because I already have the edges. Okay. And I don't need to find the centers of the surfaces because I have the centers from the component. So in a lot of ways, this gets, gets, gets a lot simpler. I also don't have those diamonds to deal with either. It's like, an, it can go in now. Oh, I don't know. I don't have my UNV plugged in. That's why. Ugh. There we go. Plug those in. And I can go ahead and uh, hide this as well. Turn that off. Now let's take a look at that attractor again. Kind of show you guys. There it is. 
and I'm just dragging that with the uh, with the uh, gumball. So most of the things I showed you will work right away with the um, with things like the panels. But when you some of these things like like especially the hexagons, I think don't work without adjusting for the curves. Okay. So if you if yours doesn't work, you can come talk to us. We can we we can help you get it to work. I I would experiment with both methods so you know. Again, if you've got the if what you end up with are curves and centers, then it's really easy. If you've got something else, like um, the panels here that I've got, so these are surfaces again. Then you're going to have to go in and get get the edges of it from the B-Rep. Join the curves so that they're closed. Right? Then you can take those things out. Make sure I got everything here. There we go. Let's see here. Look at those. 500 curves. 500 curves. Should be 500 D-reps. And then I think, whoa, I've got my, um, yeah, my centers are all, <laughs> are all off now. So I go back to the area component that I had. And then the area is going to be centered on those. So I'm still not right, though. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So we've got. Oh, it's wrong center again. Here you go. There you go. Okay. So the difference, you know, again, so it's between these and these kinds of panel things. But a lot of these are, I believe, just. Oh, it's that's different. Panels A and B. Um, a lot of these should work, like just fine, like as they are. So I would only worry about the quad panels then as an exception. Let's see here. Plug it in for that. Plug that in for those. And like I said, just keep, if you turn things off, then you can really see where those gaps are, where those differences are. There you go. Pretty good. We'll talk later about actually outputting these things and even something that you can 3D print. Um, the materials will not come out when you bake these. But there are ways to get that to um, to actually work. So, so about Arctic mode, Let's see if that works. Turn off preview. Here. Hmm. I think I crashed it. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, um, just a really quick rundown. You know, hopefully not too overwhelming, but I want you guys to get a sense of um, like what's possible with even just a little bit of work. You know, like in the software. Um, and uh, once you have one of these things assembled, you know, it's really easy to make uh, changes quickly. And um, that can help you think about a project. Okay. So, again, what I want you guys to do is go ahead and build this thing. Um, experiment with different kinds of paneling. Um, experiment with, you know, changing, you know, where the points are. Uh, changing some of the catenary conditions. Um, number of divisions or whatever, but kind of make your own uh, canopy, okay? And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and hang on to them. Um, we'll we'll have a discussion on Monday, and uh, then we'll start to break down some of these ideas, okay? Good luck. <laughs>